I love every Irish guy. And Arsenal fans, stop. Stop squealing like a bunch of mischievous mice who are off to steal some cheese. This will not be popular, but I'm sorry. In the Champions League last night, penalty. That was a penalty. A Bayern Munich penalty. It is incredible how nobody in the English media was even acknowledging this until Thomas Tuchel's post-match interview. When Tuchel said that the ref didn't have the courage to give the penalty, every pundit up and down the country nearly choked on their melted dairy milk bars because the Bayern Munich penalty claim got such little coverage during the actual game. All the talk was about Arsenal's penalty shout in the last minute when Bakayo Saka surged into the box and dangled his leg longer than an actual puppet of Butlins. Honestly, his leg was suspended in the air for so long. You'd swear he was a character of the latest Muppets film, but for Arsenal. In the 67th minute, the referee blows the whistle for Devin Raya to take his goal kick. And he does, passing it straight to Gabriel Magales, who then picks up the ball. Huh? This is an experienced 26-year-old offender who has been an absolute rock all season long, and yet he picks up the ball in his box. I mean, what did he do before the match? Had he been up until 4 a.m. the night before watching Nanny McPhee? I don't understand how a rational thinking Gabrielle can think that picking up the ball is appropriate behavior. I mean, it's almost arrogance. Could he not clearly hear the referee's whistle? I mean, did he not care? It was almost like he was telling the ref, Oh no, I decide when we take the goal kick, and I decide who gets to take it. He was mugging the referee off right in front of his face. I mean, the referee, Glenn Nyberg, told Tuchel, Oh, I couldn't give it. It's just a kiddie's mistake. I can't punish a kiddie's mistake in a Champions League quarterfinal. Sorry, what? This is the perfect place to punish a kiddie's mistake. You know where you probably shouldn't be a pedantic stickler for the rules? Ironically, in kiddies football. Yeah, I mean, if this was a bunch of seven-year-olds in a park kicking around a football bigger than their heads next to a bunch of bushes that stink of dog poo, where the biggest threat to them is the creepy ice cream van driver across the road trying to tempt them into his van, then, I mean, sure, then, if you're a referee, turn a blind eye. If these children do something stupid like picking the ball up in the box or accidentally doing a nervous poo by the corner flag. But in elite European competition for world-class athletes, you cannot let that gaff go unpunished. How is that fair to Bayern Munich and what's more, it sets a horrible, ugly precedent. If these embarrassing, childlike mistakes don't get punished in the Champions League, then what? I mean, in the PSG versus Barcelona game tonight, is it okay if Kylian Mbappé does a pee by the corner flag? Is it alright if Pedri starts slurping on a juice box in the center circle? Is it okay if the PSG defender spent 20 minutes in the second half watching Barney the Dinosaur on an old school PSP, whilst Frankie de Jong takes a timeout to write a letter to Santa Claus? These are not children! Punish the mistake! Uh, two shows right. The referee did not have the necessary courage for this match. And so should probably be accompanying a robot and a creepy girl to go and visit the Wizard of Oz. He thought that giving the penalty would have made the match all about himself. But it wouldn't. The focus would still be on Gabrielle's hopeless good boy ever. The referee has got to be braver in those situations. We must demand better of our refs. Especially in the Champions League. This is a 35 year old referee who has never sent off anyone on the Champions League night before. He averages just two bookings a match. He is clearly a nice ref. Just some goofy bloke who doesn't want to punish anyone. Yeah, he's more nauseating than the Easter Bunny. I mean, if the managers visit him in the dressing room after the match, he'd probably give them a slice of pie and presents for their kids. Nyberg clearly wants to be liked by everyone. I mean, maybe there's something about Scandinavian referees where they are just scared of the line right now. And it does make sense. Remember Anders Frisk and Tom Abrebo? Both chased out of the sport by Chelsea fans after a nightmare Champions League evening against Barcelona in 2005 and 2009. I mean, Norwegian ref Abrebo officially retired three years after the Chelsea abuse. And as for Swedish ref Frisk, he hung up his whistle within two weeks of Josie Mourinho. Oh, I was bingo. He mentioned Mourinho again. He mentioned Mourinho again. That was weird. But yes, ju just two weeks after Jose Mourinho accused him of colluding with Barca boss Frank Reichardt at halftime. I mean, Mourinho hinted that Fris had sent off Didier Drogba as a favor to his new Barca buddy. Wow, that was a wild allegation. And yes, don't forget the absolute meat muffin of a ref who failed to clock the Thierry Henry handball against Ireland in a World Cup playoff. He was Swedish too. And now, 
is a fireman. Might as well hope he since improved his eyesight, or he'll probably be squirting a fire extinguisher up his nose whilst a cat gets burned alive after the 12 year old tried to make chicken nuggets on his own. So, yes, I get why Nightberg and most other young referees from that region are now scared of the spotlight, but still, he has made it worse for himself by not giving the pen because he's instead got ugly penguins like me shouting at him online. This should have been a second penalty. And I'm sorry, but giving Harry Kane another crack at Devin Raya from 12 yards out after admitting that, yeah, he studied his penalty saving technique against Porto in the previous round. Oh, then it would be good night. Bayern Munich would have roared into a 3-1 lead and would have probably seen the game out. The narrative should not be that Arsenal were denied a stonewall penalty after Manuel Neuer fouled Saka. No, he didn't. Saka ran into him. He initiated contact, almost throwing his leg into the German. Right, well, considering Neuer literally snapped his legs like a Kit Kat on a skiing holiday before Christmas, and the last thing he wants is someone smashing into his shins at 100 mile an hour. I mean, he probably had a pretty miserable few weeks of being immobilized in bed, being fed hot chocolate through a straw. I mean, do you think a world champion like him really wanted to have his wife help him on and off the toilet when he's not even 40? Lads, you might think it would have been harsh to punish Gabrielle for a clearly innocuous mistake, but... I don't care. Anywhere else on the pitch and the referee gets involved. Lads, this reminds me of something that happened in 2005. I can't exactly remember what match it was, but it was a Champions League game on my old fuzzy, grainy Irish television. No, it wasn't in black and white, but to be fair, the TV channels would often flick between each other on their own, going back between RTE 1 and RTE 2. I mean, one minute I'm watching Wayne Rooney belt in the last minute winner against AC Milan. Yeah, the next second, I'm having to listen to Alf Stewart grumbling because someone took a bite out of his donut. But lads, I can't remember exactly what game this was, but it was a Manchester United match and Somebody took the throw in, chucking into the French defender Michael Sylvester, who grabbed the ball because he was the one on throw in duty. I mean, did the referee let that slide? No, it doesn't matter that it was a misunderstanding. The ball was in play and he grabbed it. He was given a yellow card, handball. Easy. I mean, he was usually a center back, but it's only the fullbacks who take the throws. So, transfer market said that he was the one playing left back in a nil nil draw against Lille in October 2005. So, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it was that match where he was marking Peter Odom Wingy. Wow, I'm getting old. But, lads, I'm pretty sure I did not hallucinate that moment. It did happen, okay? I hadn't poisoned my brain by eating a handful of uncooked worms. Don't worry. This happened! Oh, lads, me trying to convince you that this story is not made up. I'm getting horrible flashbacks to when I was 13. Oh, yes, I did kiss a girl over the summer. Honest, um, I met her on summer holidays. You don't know her. And, um, she doesn't have a phone or any way of contact. Um, it was definitely a real girl, okay? And, and definitely not my dog in a shed. But, lads, Arsenal were good in this match. Don't get me wrong. The atmosphere was incredible. Although, it should have been. There were no Bayern Munich fans in the stadium. Or at least there shouldn't have been. I mean, I think one did sneak into the home crowd and was quickly snapped around like a pinata. But yes, it was a great home atmosphere. A complete contrast to the last time Bayern turned up this ground where there were protests against Arsene Wenger before and after the match, which in hindsight was a grim, ugly look. Arguably the greatest manager in the history of your club. Immortalizing the football folklore after that incredible invincible season. And the way some Arsenal fans were speaking about him, you'd swear he was Pennywise the clown just hiding in the sewers ready to eat your kids. So this was a totally different atmosphere. But this will still be a disappointment Lads, I predicted this match to be a 4-0 Arsenal win. Bakayo Saka sticking the 1-0 up after 12 minutes. Ben White had a chance to make a 2-0 moments later, and he fluffed his lines. I'm guessing somewhere Steve Holland was sitting at home, cackling like a banshee as he tucked into a six pizza slice. But then that Serge Gnabry, the ex-Arsenal misfit score an equalizer. It was defensive hideousness. Devin Raya has been fantastic ever since he joined the gutters in the summer. But here he was, terrifying Gabriel by running so far out of his goal, he should have been in a position to receive a simple back pass. But he was so far away from his own nest. He was almost across the road, buying chicken nuggets from a van. It panicked Gabrielle, so he hurriedly passed it to Jacob Kivor, who then froze like a snowman. I'm still not sure why Alexander Zinchenko, a far better player, started this game on the bench. Anyway, the ball does eventually work through to Serge Gnabry, who boots it through Raya's legs before doing that awful tea celebration. Considering this man was arguably Wenger's biggest mistake, treating him like some chubby teddy bear, throwing him away on loan to West Brom before selling him to Werder Bremen. I mean, this is like Chelsea banishing Kevin De Bruyne to Germany after deciding that he was some wet ginger wimp with the backbone of marmalade pie. To see him now silencing the Emirates with the Champions League goal, that would have hurt Arsenal fans. That would have felt like being punched in the groin by a dwarf and then took a pound it 50 minutes later. Leroy Asani receives the ball 40 yards from goal and just takes off, dancing past four Arsenal defenders. Mikel Arteta should have had a better defensive game plan to deal with these wingers. He has no excuse. He played.
great with Gnabry at Arsenal, and he coached Sade at Man City. But no, they ran rings around the Arsenal defence. Yes, Leandro Trossard rescued a draw with 50 minutes to go. Although, it is worrying how many pundits said that Arsenal had rescued a point. Yeah, I heard Ali McCoy and a female presenter covering the Real Madrid versus Man City game both say this? What point? Where was this point going? I mean, everyone who worked these games, had they all drunk a litre of crazy juice each? Lads, I should want Arsenal to go through. Because if they don't, I have to do a love song for Declan Rice. But right now, at the minute, it's advantage Bayern Munich. But really, that referee, he really did cost Bayern a famous win. Uh, it sounds like the creepy ice cream. Yeah, that's that creepy ice cream driver now. You're not taking my kids! He stopped. I don't have any kids. Um, see you tomorrow. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know what do you think. Let me know what do you think. Was it a penalty? Was it not? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get like, share, and subscribe. Always, I'll talk to you in a while.